Thank you, Tim. And once again, welcome everyone. It's so great to be here with you today, Ray. We're so happy to be here at Weeksville Heritage Center having this conversation. And you're the man of the hour. I'm one of Weeksville. I'm one of the people of Weeksville. <laughs> it's great. good to be here. Absolutely, absolutely. For those of you all who may not know, Lord Cultural Resources had the great pleasure, honor of working with the Weeksville Heritage Center team on its strategic plan. Mm -hmm. And it was just such a wonderful um, opportunity to be able to create that mm -hmm. vision with you all. Um, and so I'm excited to be here now to talk a little bit more about you and about the vision. So yes, we're here to talk about Weeksville, but can we get to know you a little bit, sure, Ray? Sure. Okay, all right. So can you tell me a little bit, what's your origin story? My origin story. <laughs> <laughs> I was born in England. I was born in Nottingham, England. Um, I moved to Galveston, Texas when I was nine years old and spent my summers in England, in, in Nottingham, Nottingham. So Nottingham <laughs> is actually where Robin Hood is from. So it's actually a, it's a real thing. It's okay. a real place, all right, all right, not a mythical right. town. <laughs> um, so I spent my time between there and Galveston, Texas. And I moved to New York in 94 to start graduate school to pursue a PhD in anthropology. And but actually, and growing up, I bounced a little bit between Jamaica, the UK, and the US. My parents are Jamaican. They moved to England in the 1950s. So between the US, UK, and Jamaica is, is my origin story. Origin story. And here you are in yeah, Brooklyn. It's great. Living and working in Brooklyn at Weeksville Heritage Center. What, what excites you about living here and working here? Living in Brooklyn and working in Brooklyn being at Weeksville is, is a dream job. You know, it, kind of, it brings everything full circle for me and a lot of, there are not many opportunities where things can come full circle and feel so good. Mm -hmm. um, it allows me to live and work in, in the borough, uh, close to home. And it also allows me to bring my professional, my personal, my political interests all under the same roof, all in the same job. Mm -hmm. The history of Weeksville is incredible mm -hmm. to be able to be a part of that. Um, you know, and shout out to everybody that came before me, the community members, the original residents of Weeksville Historical Community, um, the people that, that came here, that, that fled, came here for refuge, came here for, for an oasis. Mm -hmm. Also, all the previous executive directors, uh, Pamela Green, Tia Pal Harris, um, Rob Fields, the board, community members who supported us steadfastly throughout the years. Yeah. So to be a part of that lineage, to be a part of that history, and, and to be leading at this moment, it's, it's an incredible feeling. It, it's awesome. Yeah, that's so great to hear you say it that way. And you have an arts background too, right? So do you see the arts in, in Weeksville? Sure. Yeah, I do. Um, so before I was here, I was five, I was at, the, at a play, an organization called High Arts. I was there for five years as the executive director, mm -hmm. and High Arts really focused on theater, performance, and visual art. We're based in East Harlem, shout out to El Barrio, um, but I'm in Brooklyn now. And you know, the, the arts have always been at Weeksville. Yeah. Arts, culture, and politics, that intersection has always been a, a part of um, Weeksville's community, uh, Weeksville as an organization, always part of that profile. So to be able to think about what the arts mean at Weeksville at this particular moment, especially how they intersect and overlap around questions of social justice. In this moment, mm -hmm. um, it's great. As you walk through the building, you know, we have 1.5 acres, we're on 1.5 acres. So you walk through the building, um, you walk outside of the meadow, there are many multiple numerous spaces for arts programming. We have yeah. a beautiful visual arts gallery, we have the multi-purpose room, we have outside, we're all arts programming can take place, whether that be visual art, performance, whether that be theater, sculpture, the beautiful sculpture, Sugar in the Bowl, right behind me. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's a part of a, the arts are a part of a longer tradition at Weeksville that I definitely want to continue and expand upon. And also reach out to, to local artists yeah. and provide space for, the, for local artists here in, in Brooklyn to create. And I want to say that there's something special about creating art in a place like Weeksville, an historical site with the history and the energy that it has. Yeah. It's a great creative environment. Yeah. Actually, it's so interesting that you say that. And you mentioned when you were talking just now um, to be at Weeksville in this moment. Can you talk a little bit about that, about in this moment? I mean, we, we talk so much about the pandemic and, um, and, and, and just everything, the racial and social justice sure. movement. Can you talk about 
Weeksville's space in that, sure. in your mind? Yeah. I mean, historically, Weeksville is a community, has been a community, the community that's been built on really social justice, mm -hmm. freedom, citizenship, freedom, I mean, social justice before it was, it was a term. The whole idea of Weeksville is one of resistance, um, that's you know, right. social change. So to be able to, to build off that legacy is, is, is incredible. Right now we find ourselves, I mean not right now, but you know, post George Floyd, um, all the racial unrest, all the discussions around racial equity, mm -hmm. social justice, we want to be a place and we can be a place and are a place where those discussions can take place in unapologetic ways. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have the, the physical space to house um, community, dis community discussions around social justice and really give people um, the intellectual space, the artistic space, yeah. to be able to, to really drill down on, the, on social justice issues. So for us to be in that position and for me to be leading the organization at this time is a, I don't take it lightly. Yeah. It's a big responsibility, but it's one that I'm, I'm honored yeah. to, to be in this position, to be able to begin to facilitate or open the organization to some of, the, some of those discussions, some of that art, some of that dialogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things we talked about earlier when we were just kind of having conversation was that you had a, a, an aha moment um, about Weeksville. Can you sure. talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, I hope most people have an aha moment when they come to Weeksville. They should. It's a, it's a special place. Um, for me, you know, I came here, um, there wasn't anybody here. I actually got a, a, a private tour and you know, for, for people that work in museums, one of the perks uh, is being able to go into a space when there's nobody is. there. We want people to come. We definitely <laughs> want people to come. That's true, that's but, true. But um, a perk of the job is being here when you're, you're, you're one of few or maybe the only person and walking through the houses and walking around the site. And it really hit me, so the, the history, all the work it took to get Weeksville to this, to this moment Absolutely. that it is that we find ourselves. Um, and you feel the weight of, of, of that history whether it be people, whether it be the organization. Um, it's a special place that has a special energy and it's reflected and you feel it, it's palpable, it's tangible when, when you step here and you're literally at the crossroads yeah. of not only the, the weeks was an historic community, but the building that we find ourselves in, the Arts and Culture Center. Um, it's an interesting mix of contemporary, and, and of the contemporary and the historical all in one place. And when you stand in front of the Hunter Hunterfly um, Road houses, you feel that it's sort of a, it's, it's almost like a fulcrum, a vortex, a point at which all that meets. And yeah. I felt it um, right before I took the job. Yeah. And I actually went from thinking, you know, this is a job that I can do, to this is a job that I want to do, to this is a job that I have to do. Absolutely, absolutely. We talk about that so much. Uh, you know, Weeksville is a place that people care about, That's people right. feel, people have a passion for. Um, and, and that's the thing that we felt in the strategic planning process. We really felt that the community owns Weeksville. Sure, sure. Um, and so it's so important. Um, in fact, just to bring this up, one of the things, the, the way that the CIG ownership uh, status is, is uh, arranged with the city, can you, can you explain how that's different from other CIGs? Sure. My understanding is that usually a, um, the Department of Cultural Affairs, the city would come in and take over an entire building. Um, in this case, they've sort of are helping to pay for and support the building, but the, non the Weeksville's nonprofit actually maintained ownership of the homes, which is yes. a unique relationship and a, a unique dynamic in this broader CIG program. So the idea about ownership yeah. and self-determination that Weeksville was built on is something that is maintained to date. And it's actually a unique feature of this particular relationship. And I think it's, I think it's right, I think it's appropriate. The, the, the houses belong to Brooklyn, they belong to the community, mm -hmm. community and they should stay that way. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think the city understood that, and understood the importance of, of having ownership, not be city-led, city but community and Brooklyn-based. Yeah. I think about that too when we talk about the work that you all do with genealogy. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll, the reason I thought about that was um, we still is so much about agency sure. as opposed to empowerment, right? Sure. Like people are inherently powerful. Mm -hmm. um, they, they just need to be, hey, you've got the power. Sure. Weeksville's always provided agency and kind of given the sure. tools, right? right. So um, 
and, and I think about that with the genealogy programs right. and the way that you all have been doing that. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about those programs? Yeah. I mean, the genealogy programs and but the idea of really sort of tracking your own history, telling that narrative in mm -hmm. your own voice is, is extremely important. And that's empowering. That's, that's a form of agency and it's something that as an organization we've embraced wholeheartedly. So providing genealogy workshops, really allowing people to track their own family history. I mean, I think about mine, I, you know, as I was thinking about talking to you, I was thinking about what is my own genealogy and, and where, do, where, where do I crisscross? And yeah. talking about Jamaica, the UK, um, and, and tracing that through my family, being, being able to go back, it's, it's very empowering. It's very empowering, empowering to be able to tell your own story in your own words and to track your own, your own family's sort of line. Um, it's a, it's a form of identity, it's a form of mm -hmm. culture, it's a form mm -hmm. of politics, it's a form of self-empowerment that, again, a, as a core theme in the history of Weeksville and what we want to do here and what we can continue to do here is the idea of self-identification, telling your own narrative, finding the tools to tell your own story in your own words. It's very, it's very empowering and we're glad as an organization to be able to play any small role in that. Yeah. When we were also talking earlier, you talked about the kind of holes um, that people kind of polarized thinking of black thought, black community, yeah. and that Weeksville can be a space that helps the, to address the space in between. Um, and I thought to myself, well, you know, that's a doctor of anthropology right there. So he's able to put the words in. <laughs> so <laughs> can, you, can you just even expostulate a little sure. bit more on that? <laughs> sure. You know, I think part of, you know, when I, when I started thinking about Weeksville and started to read about it, a couple of things jumped out. One was the complexity of blackness and the, the complex relations that are found historically in, in Weeksville. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't all one type of person, teachers, philanthropists, police officers, doctors. I mean, it's a very diverse community. So in that sense, that's always been there. Yeah. So the complexity and diversity of, of blackness is something that as an organization now, we're obviously embracing, whether that be through art, through dialogue, discussion. Um, we want to be able to have a diverse range of black folks feel like this space is theirs and be able to incorporate and address those kind of conversations, be through art, whether it be through dialogue, whether it be through panel discussions. Then the other thing is that, you know, there's such a polarization of the black experience in, yeah. in the media between we're either really happy or we're traumatized. Yeah. And I'd like Weeksville to be a place where we can definitely, we need to address both because mm -hmm. there are, it's, those, are, those elements are so salient right now to, to our existence. Kind of in some ways that's where we are, but there's a lot of space in between that represents the black experience the complexity of the black experience, yeah. and the range of blackness and black identity. And Weeksville has always been that place where that can be explored, whether it be Weeksville as an historical, historic community, or Weeksville as an or arts organization, a museum, historic site. So that's really what I, what I was trying to get at, is what are the ways in which cultural institutions, Weeksville for example, can really reflect, represent, interrogate, help think about <laughs> the complexity of black life, the range yeah. of black life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're right. complex people. Yeah, we are complex <laughs> people. We, are complex people. <laughs> we will uh, question, in fact, talk about the activist stance or a space for activism, and I guess the audiences that Weeksville wants to engage with. Sure, sure. So ideally, I think Weeksville can become a place where both at the local and national level, discussions around social justice can take place. You know, as I said earlier, the idea of Weeksville is so radical yeah. and built around resistance that it's it's in the ether, yeah. it's it's in the water, and it's in the history. So it's for us to it's for us to pick continue, not not just me, but for us to continue to pick up that mantle and run with that. Um, you know, as we talked about er about earlier, these are very serious times we find ourselves living in, um, which also gives cultural institutions and places like Weeksville and Weeksville the opportunity to opportunity to step up and be directly involved and engage in those discussions, those difficult conversations, to provide that oasis of space. You can come here and chill out on the, on, on the green and to get your head together, but also an intellectual oasis, an artistic mm -hmm. oasis, where mm -hmm. we can create work and create art that really addresses that social justice theme and all the things that, that, are, that, are, that our communities and communities like Weeksville um, mm -hmm. are experiencing right now and mm -hmm. will continue, because it's not going anywhere. You know, we're gonna continue to kind of 
experience those very difficult social, cultural, and political circumstances. So. Yeah, yeah. What future programming that Weeksville Heritage Center has in the works are you most excited about? Sure. So I think in general for me, what's exciting is really opening up the space, both physically, but intellectually, artistically. So there's actually a resource center here that I feel as though it's a little underused. Mm -hmm. So it'd be great, for example, to open the resource center after, and after we have a visual art exhibit, pub, the public could go to the resource center and read more about the artist, read more about the content, maybe look at a catalog. Um, so really opening up the space for further exploration of the work that's going on here, whether that yeah. be an art exhibit, whether that be a sculpture, whether that be a play. So the resource center is, is front of mind and thinking about how do we make that more of a public space. Um, along that line, it may not be as um, quote unquote sexy as a project, but I think, the, I think the public will really appreciate the preservation of the houses. Yes. I mean, the houses Absolutely. are the, the crown jewel in a lot of ways of Weeksville. That's what got us here. Um, but houses require maintenance and preservation. Mm -hmm. So what I'm excited about is continuing to build out a preservation program and the benefit of that will be the upkeep of the houses yeah. and, and you'll see that they take a lot of wear and tear they're beautiful they're stoic they're historical they you know they have a great presence about them but they need they need maintenance so to build out that preservation program which can also be a learning program as well we can use this as an opportunity to help people understand how better to preserve yeah. historic places like Weeksville so I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the resource center um, I'm excited about this idea about preservation. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also excited about, I've been, I've been talking about the presence of the arts, and we talked a little bit about this. Yeah. We're thinking about how, as an organization, do we continue to engage local artists to provide space for them to create work? Um, one of the things that there's no secret in New York City is that space to create work is at a premium, and it's not cheap. Um, so how as an organization do we open our doors to help artists present work, to create work um, that are really going to give them audience, really to help them develop their work, whether that be through artist residencies, artist commissions. Mm -hmm. But what role can Weeksville play in helping to further build out the artistic community in black Brooklyn and, and beyond? Um, yeah. we, have a, we have great display pres presentation spaces. We have great spaces all around the building. That's great. And, you know, when you create work on an historic site, it's going to feel different. It's going to look different. Mm -hmm. um, creative environment, context it, it is everything in a lot of ways. So we feel like the work that's created here is going to look and feel different as a result of being here. So, you know, we have the Freedom Fellowship. We have artists that, are, that have come through that. Yeah. And I really like to continue that work, work that, there's, that has an intersection between community engagement, public engagement, and creativity and artistic products. So really, if we can be a place where artists can come that are interested in social justice issues and being able to not just put community perspectives in on the back end at the end of the project, but to incorporate these perspectives from the beginning, middle, and end. I think yeah. we'll be, have a highly successful um, commissioning, commissioning and um, artist residency program. So those are the kind of artists are, are top of mind for me, in addition to people's work that doesn't necessarily fit that, but. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, the idea that a cultural institution can help to rethink the relationship between the public and what's displayed, yes. what's presented, and what's created at the institution is really exciting to me. And there, there are a number of artists that come to mind right now that I'm excited about um, approaching. You know, it's, it's interesting because when I told people that I was coming to, to Weeksville, several, several artists right away said, great. You know, we've always wanted to work with Weeksville you know, this is gonna be a great opportunity. How do we get in? You know, what can we do to get our work shown or how can we work with you all? So the idea around partnerships, one-on-one yeah. -on -one partnerships with artists through commissions, That's through great. artist residencies, but as well as institutions, other partner institutions, whether they be CIG, in, in the CIG program or not. Um, you know, we, we wanna be good, strong partners in the creation of work. And we also, you know, while, while doing that, thinking about continuing to refine the Weeksville aesthetic. Yeah. So what does work mean? What does it look like that comes through here? And what is our relationship with the artists that create that work? 
I love that you said the Weeksville aesthetic. I was, as you were talking, I was thinking, so if I'm an artist, I'm gonna get to have an amazing experience here because I'm gonna get to create in this space. If I'm a preservationist, I'm going to get to use existing tools. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's amazing. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm a mom, this okay. is a thing, you know, and I have a six-year-old, of course, so I, I come up here with, and a, and a four-year-old, I come up here with my brood and my you know, teenage um, uh, cousins who are mm -hmm. with me. What is the experience that I'm going to have when I arrive at Weeksville? What can sure. I expect? Sure, I've, I have an eight-year-old and I wonder about that same thing because <laughs> um, she's a tough critic. Exactly, they but, you know, know everything. But you know, so thinking about what, what, what I'm excited about and thinking about that in, in the context of, of education, I'm sort of you know, been dreaming about how do we tell the Weeksville story from different age groups? Yes. Would that be an infant? Would that be a teen? Whether that be somebody middle age, whether that be an elder, how do we change the narrative and the way in which the Weeksville story is told? Still authentic, yes. still the Weeksville story, told in the houses, told through the houses, but from different vantage points. And yeah. I think sort of those kind of ways to tie very age specific experiences, to tell them through a particular historical lens, I think would be very exciting for, for, for young people. But more generally, I think there's a lot of opportunity to create youth programs. So youth programs sort of on one end, but programs for elders as well, because that's mm -hmm. also something that's been asked of me. And so what about if you yes. want to, you know, well, these aren't quite elders, but what if you want to hear, hear old school hip hop, what if you want to hear <laughs> funk, what if you, yes. what if you want to hear yes. jazz, as well as, you want to, as well as if you want to hear trap. I mean, there's <laughs> got a big tent <laughs> at Weeksville. Absolutely, and Weeksville has the opportunity to we, space, we, we right? Have, we have an opportunity yeah. to expand the notion of what programming can take place. And some of it's already, or you've been taking place here. It's just ex expanding and fortifying what we what we already have. So um, yeah. you know, the idea is to have a rich experience in a multi generational, cross generational way. Yeah. And I think we're beginning. We're at that point now. We're beginning to hone down on that as as an education, as through education initiatives. So it's, yeah. a, it's an exciting time. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm excited about bringing bringing people here and being a part of, of programs that happen here. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I think too. Um, if you could talk just one last thing, if you could talk a little bit more um, just about the, the origins of Weeksville, um, how I know that a lot of people here watching today are community members, and sometimes we talk about the beauty of the space and the advocacy of the space, but we forget to talk sure. about the people who actually create the space and even the rediscovery. Sure, sure. So James Weeks was a, he's called Stevedore. Yes. Which is a great yeah, word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. I love <laughs> it. I love it. I love it. I always uh, like, essentially, a longshore, a longshore yeah, worked on yeah. the wharfs. Um, bought land, two hundred fifty dollars, uh, ten ten lots at two hundred two hundred and fifty dollars each. Two hundred fifty dollars is the cutoff. It's the cutoff or the the um, entry point at which you know you own land and you're able to vote based on your ownership of land. Important. And that leads to full, citiz full citiz citizenship. Yep. So in a lot of ways, it's a, it's a very strategic, it's a very um, deliberate attempt and action to give black people the right to vote and in turn full citizenship. So when we talk about self-determination, we talk about community building freedom, that's exactly. what we're talking about. Exactly. So those are the roots of, of, of the Weeksville community. And then at um, turn of the century, Different, different numbers you hear. The, the top was 500 or 700 families, but it was a very significant mm -hmm. black community. And it was also a community that was absorbed, one of the few free communities that was absorbed into a broader kind of urban neighborhood. So it didn't stay by itself. It was absorbed or moved into this broader neighborhood network. So Weeksville became absorbed into this sort of wider area, but still maintained its, its black focus and its black population. Um, so the height of it is, so 1830s to about the 1930s. Then we have kind of herb, um, you know, weeks, uh, Kingsborough houses being built. Yes. So there's some displacement, and the community is starting to be dispersed. In 68, it was rediscovered by a professor at Pratt. Saw Weeksville in the records at Pratt. It wasn't on the Weeksville, the houses that are out there now, they're, they're, um, are, are the historic houses that are out there now or from the 19th century, but they didn't show up on, they weren't on a grid system, so yeah. you could only really see them through the air. Right. So he chartered a, you know, kind of a, almost like a crop duster plane, flies and sees them sort of off the grid, and those are the Weeksville houses, and yes. then Project Weeksville as a result. 
is a dig that takes place in front in excavate yeah. very time era specific artifacts and Joan Maynard becomes involved and is really the driver yeah. in pushing this to become an historic site to become landmarked in 1970 1971 um, and that's where you get the beginnings of Weeksville as it's in its current iteration as an historical site and it's amazing I mean it was I mean, if you look at the pictures you see that it was a truly community effort and yeah. you just you can't underestimate or talk enough about the commitment of Joan Maynard, the community members that took it upon themselves to really take this place, run with it, you know, maintain it as a bastion of black Absolutely. history, um, black achievement, black excellence, and resistance. Yeah. And so to, to build, so what we're sitting in now, where we are, is, is, is the direct outcome of that. It's all on a continuum, sort of like, it's, 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 it's the Joan Maynards of the world, it's all the previous executive directors, but you know, this institution as itself has always been a collective, and the yeah. community has been front and center in it, and, and will continue to do so. So really when I think about Weeksville, that's really what I think about is you know, the amount of work that it took to get it to this point. It's still standing, it's, 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 it's doing really well, um, it's solid, it, yes. solid, it's stable, um, it has a hell of a future and a hell of an arc and a hell of a trajectory to look forward to. And I feel super fortunate to be in this position right now. But I do want to ground Weeksville's history um, and the contemporary and, and in the interest of a community around preserving its own voice, preserving its history, and telling that story in ways that, that are authentic and unapologetic. And that's really what Weeksville in a lot of ways means to me. So. Um, you know, I'll keep saying it, but I, I take that seriously. And um, yeah, I feel fortunate to be leading at this time. I couldn't think of a better place I'd like to be. I want to ask this last question. What is your most fervent wish for Weeksville? Oh. Let's think do plural. Let's do plural wishes. All right, give me, give me all of the wishes. Okay, I don't, not, not a laundry list, but um, I think one is sustainability. Yes. You know, and sustainability is not an end goal, it's not something that you reach, it's, the, it's, the on, it's an ongoing process. So we want to be sustainable. We want to be able to do our work in ways where we're, we're fully resourced, staff-wise, financially. Um, I love the idea of being resilient, but I want to thrive. Yeah. <laughs> I want the organization yes. to thrive and be Yeah, we don't resourced. want to just survive, we want to thrive. Exactly. I agree, I, I agree I, with and you. I think, we, yeah. I think we should be, and I, I don't think that uh, as an institution, the black, black institution, we should think about us, ourselves as only resilient, but we want to be able to to be fully resourced and to do the work that we need to do. Um, I'm interested and I'm, I'm excited about, like I mentioned earlier, revamping and thinking about education. Yes. What are some very creative and contemporary ways that we can update, whether that be the education program, whether that be through 3D, 3D virtual um, tours, yeah. on-site tours, different types of curriculum. Um, and also thinking about Weeksville as an artistic and creative space. You know, there's so many great large areas in the, in the museum, or in, the, in the building and, and on site, but small pockets as well right. that are just ripe for, for the creation of art. So to build strong ties between Weeksville and the broader Brooklyn and, and, and national um, arts community mm -hmm. is, is, is a goal or a wish. But also I think more broadly that people see and view Weeksville as um, a, a, local and a, a local and a national space for the discussion. Inter of, the, of the intersection of art and, and social justice. So when we are a nationally recognized center for dialogue, the creation of art around social justice, um, I think we'll be there. That's one of the wishes. Yeah, I, I love to hear that. That is really exciting. And I'm excited about you, Ray. I'm excited about the, the great things that you're gonna do here at Weeksville and that the community, working with the community and um, because we know that the Weeksville community owns this space. Definitely, definitely. So, um, thank you. No, thank you. It's a, it's a great time to be here. Um, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited about what's to come, and it's been great to talk to you. Great talking to you, too. So, I know that many community members have been um, eagerly awaiting this conversation and have submitted some questions online. So, actually, at this time, I'm going to turn this over to Tia Powell Harris and you, Ray, uh, to answer some of those questions. Thank, Thank you. you.